Now, whilst we've got uh, room in the hot seats, let's put it, three people in the hot seats. Our first guest has scored, a speaker, let me say that again, has played more games and scored more tries than any other forward in Australian rugby league history. He plays for a club called Manly. He's represented Australia in representative games. And uh, when Manly finally wins the grand final this year, that will be Steve Menzies' final game before he goes to play for Bradford in the UK. Would you please welcome our first guest, Steve Menzies. Thank you, Mark. Joining him on stage is the doctor of the sporting stars, a chiropractor of renown who has a busy sporting practice in Neutral Bay, a wonderful place where you can see it both the stars and the common people who uh, respond to his magic healing hands. I refer to, of course, Dr David Stephen. <laughs> and hopefully we'll arrange this so that we have a rose between two thorns. Uh, please welcome back Melinda Gainsford. Isn't that wonderful? I just realised I missed out on something, but I'll catch up with you later. <laughs> well, Linda, we've heard a little bit of your background, so perhaps we can start with you, Steve. Let's talk a little bit about rugby and how you got into it. Yeah, well, I suppose I've been... Uh, yeah, I suppose, um, similar to uh, Melinda, I just started playing rugby league, uh, probably when I was six or seven. Um, someone came around and said, do you want to play footy? And I think my older brother at the time, he's two and a half years old, he said, I want to play, so I looked and said, well, if he's playing, Mum, can I play too? So that's how I started. Um, I you know, just played because I loved the game. I started playing professionally, I suppose, when I was about 17, got off of a contract. Um, it became serious when I was about 19, uh, and I was graded to Manly um, to play under-21s. Played a few games, six or seven games for um, under-21s, made reserve grade. Uh, about six or seven games later, um, a uh, really good mate of mine, uh, Nick Kossif, has, uh, he's had two full reconstructions of both knees. He's had um, some bad luck in the sporting arena. Um, he's probably my best mate. He did his knee for the first time and gave me my first chance to play first grade for Manly. So that was back in 1993. Um, since that time, I've been lucky enough to play in grand finals. Won one and lost a couple, which uh, aren't too good. Um, Play for my state for New South Wales and also for Australia. Um, this is probably good, or this is my last season in Australia. Uh, I played 16 years in first grade for Manly. Uh, I'm going to Bradford next year to play uh, one season over there. The, the body's getting Dave's doing his best to, to keep the body together for one more season over there, so I can earn a few pounds. But um, <laughs> that that'll probably uh, probably do me. Then I don't know. I want to get a, a, a proper job after that, which is no good. <laughs> we'll come back to that now. Ask my opponent, Dr. David, but David, how did you get to uh, have such a focus and such an influence on sporting your people in your chiropractic career? Um, a bit about your background. Yeah, I suppose I was just lucky there in several different ways. Some have been referred from um, normal patients, like one was referred from my receptionist. Um, Steve has been actually interestingly referred from uh, a couple of rugby union players, so there's a big connection there between league and union there. Mark Gerard sent Steve in, so uh, that was an interesting <coughs> connection. Uh, Mel's actually sort of a bit of family history there, isn't it? My wife lives out in a similar area, a town, town called Trangy, so um, she'd known the games was all life, so that was a, a family connection there. So I've always had an interest in sports, and I felt as though um, we were very lacking chiropractically in letting people know what we can do for sports people. I suppose Steve will allude to that later on, but um, you know, he didn't. It, I don't know, I wouldn't know really, did you, what a chiropractor did, and didn't need to. I mean, you played, you know, nearly 300 games at that stage, so why would you need someone like us? So I think, you know, one of my things has been to try and educate people as well as I can, and fix people as fast as I can. So how have you done the education? Have you got, got out there and talked to the community? Or? Not a lot, not like Kurt, and um, I suppose I'm not as, as comfortable with that. Um, maybe opportunities haven't arisen as uh, much as Kurt, but try to, in the room, try to educate um, you know, people like these two athletes as much as I can on what we do and what's different to someone like a masseuse or a physio and how we can tie that into the soft tissue structures that we're not just looking at bone, we're looking at lymphatics, we're looking at uh, muscle attachments, we're looking at tendons and, and how we can heal them as fast as possible and that, that's a combination of, of all of those things. I think Wayne will probably allude to that later on 
too because he's had a lot of experience with that, that combination with physiotherapy and, and chiropractic and sometimes like you all know that becomes a bit disappointing when the practitioners aren't working together towards an athlete's um, maximum function. You know, it shouldn't come down to, to the practitioner's thoughts about whether they're better than someone else or whether they're the right person for the job. It should be who's going to fix the athlete the fastest. So, Melinda, when did you first get into Dr. David's things? How did that happen? Oh, well, it actually happened through my brother David, who had a very serious back um, issues. It was quite debilitating, really. And um, going to, to David changed his life. And, you know, for me, I really hadn't... I'd only probably been to a chiropractor once throughout my whole career. It was really more massage, physio-based. And I have to admit, I only wish now that I had met David when I was running, because I'm sure... I have all my problems, and I was sitting there before with Kirk when I was going through things. And went, yep, yeah, I've had that, I've had that. Like, you know, like I had so many injuries throughout my career um, that it would have been nice to meet someone like David then. And, and like, even now with my kids, you know, the kids that I coach, um, a couple of them have a, have a couple of issues, and I really want um, them to come and see David. I've got one there, but. They're a bit reluctant, unfortunately, for some reason. They're thinking, oh, no, going to Cairo, going to get cracked, and, you know, like it's a massive issue. But it would just change one of my athletes so much. He would just have uh, less problems. So I'm also, too, trying to educate my young kids as well um, to be able to come and, you know, for them physically and growing up to, to see the chiropractor. But for me personally, I used to be, obviously, a sprinter, and I always dreamed of jogging. You know, I used to drive down the street and see people jog. This is when I was going to the Olympics and think, wow, I wish I could jog. You know, I could never jog. And I know that sounds bizarre. I know that's right. But it's, it's funny, talking me technically, I always had to run on my toes and I had another thing called compartment syndrome. So if I ever tried to jog, I'd get very um, sore um, or um, Achilles and also very tight calves. So I had to learn to run again properly, like for a jogger. And I came into David and said, look, I'm really loving this thing. I was actually trying to run a half marathon, but that's a whole different story. But um, David then tried to encourage me, and he'll probably take you through it, to get into orthotics. Um, and uh, I said, no, Dave, I've been there before. Don't like them. And he said, Mel, honestly, you try these foot levelers, and it's going to make a massive difference to you. So I did trust him because he made a massive, you know, he, he had made such changes to my body physically that... Um, I did trust him and, and it's been the best thing we've ever done.